Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Markiplier Theory, aka Matt Pat's brand new fourth theory channel. But in all seriousness, Matt Pat did change the banner logos of his game channel and his film channel to where they're no longer teasing the fourth channel. Does this mean that the fourth channel's already out? Well, that would be kind of weird considering that GT Live and Food Theory still have the old banners that are still teasing Matt Pat's fourth channel. But what do y'all think this means? Am I just thinking too deep into it? Probably. But anyways, let's get back to actually talking about Markiplier. Specifically, everybody's favorite pink mustached party goer, Wilford Wharfstash. Now it's been a hot minute since I've talked about Wilford Wharfstash specifically, so I thought now's a better time than ever to just review his story, his character, and all the theories that we have about him so far. And of course, what better way to start off than by telling his origin story. Now, to be honest, Wilford has always been my favorite Markiplier ego, and I've been wondering why is that the case? And I actually do believe that a big reason for why he is my favorite is actually just because of the origin story alone. At the very end of Who Killed Markiplier, you and the Colonel end up finding Abe's secret room where he's been keeping tabs on everybody who's stuck in the mansion. This causes the Colonel to snap and start acting very irrationally. The Colonel goes out to look for Abe in a fit of rage. At this point, for some reason, he is convinced that Abe was the one who killed his friends. But after that, he finally finds Abe and they both point guns at each other. Eventually, Abe says some out of line shit and gets the Colonel pissed off. So then he shoots Abe out of rage and anger, which causes you to try to steal the gun from the Colonel, which causes him to accidentally pull the trigger and shoot you as well. We can tell that this was an accident based off of whenever you're falling, he does try to catch you from falling off the balcony. But anyways, after you go into some sort of black void and talk with the spirit of Damien and Celine to come back as Darkiplier, you rise back up and one key detail that you can tell from looking out the windows and from the lighting is that it is currently daytime, which implies that your body has pretty much just been laying there dead for the whole night. But you're not alone in that scene because as you're soon to realize, the Colonel was also lying there the entire night just watching your dead body just processing the terrible thing that he has just done to you. And also not just to you, but also the fact that he shot Abe and the fact that at the time he thinks he's the one who killed Markiplier. He doesn't know that it was a whole setup and all that stuff. So he thinks that he's done all these terrible things in the course of just these couple of nights. And it really has to take a tool on his mental health. But then all of a sudden he just sees you casually get back up after laying there dead for a whole night. So obviously he's really confused. Like really really confused the only somewhat like realistic explanation he can come up with at that very moment is that it's all a joke and this whole big uh, series was just an elaborate prank on him so for the final time as you see the colonel slowly walking away from you or limping i should say he also will slowly come to the conclusion that death is meaningless and seeing you rise back up from the dead puts everything and all of his philosophy and religion and everything deep like that into question for him. In other words, he's currently going through the same internal battle that Abe was going through in the events of Wilford Motherloving Wharfstash. But for now, let's just stick with the timeline. I'll go more in depth between Abe and Wilford's connection later on in the video. But yeah, all of this mentally hitting the Colonel at once really affects him and really changes him to make him the Wilford Motherloving Wharfstash that we all know and love. And from this point onward, the thing that I'm most fascinated about when it comes to Wilford's character is how whenever he became the most lost and self-aware that he may not be in a world that's as realistic and abides by the rules as it may seem, he simultaneously mastered the philosophy and the rules that his world obeys. And I know that probably sounds very confusing and you may have a couple questions on what the hell I'm talking about, but just let me explain. As you may be able to tell at this point, the world where all of the Markiplier lore takes place isn't realistic and it doesn't abide by the same rules that our normal world that we live in every day abides by. 
A few examples of this are seen in the Wilford Mother Loving Wharf stash video. Every time Wilford has one of those transitions where he ends up getting like shocked by a taser, then all of a sudden he's in a brand new place, you can tell on his reaction that he knew that was a transition. He could tell that he randomly just teleported from one place to another. In other words, that transition itself is also canon to the Markiplier lore. That actually happened. There wasn't just some slow drive to Abe's building that just got cut for the viewer's enjoyment. That transition actually happened in their world as well. An easier way to think of it is almost as if they are stuck inside of a YouTube video, which is really, really meta if you think about it. And upon knowing this information himself, Wilford, or should I say Colonel at the time, ends up coming to the conclusion that not many humans nowadays are willing to accept. Everybody wants to find an answer to everything. Everybody wants to know the why or the how of everything. They want to be right. And they want to be correct upon getting a conclusion about the why and the how. Ironically enough, these features are represented by Abe. At the beginning of the Wilford Mother Loving Wharf Stash video, Abe represents the stereotypical average everyday citizen that is blinded to the truth or not self-aware about what's really going on in the world. In a more simpler way of putting it, he still believed that he was in a world that made full sense, everything could be explained up to a science, and everything was really grounded and really real. But meanwhile, Wilford Wharfstash kind of did the opposite. Upon hearing his information, he just kind of accepted that he doesn't know the answer. He has accepted that this world makes no sense, and he decides to just go with the flow instead of trying to find a little answer to have everything make sense. And because of this, he kind of technically like gained the powers to teleport and to move around and to do all these crazy things, which any other ego can't do. Kind of like in In Space with Markiplier Part 2, where he just randomly brings up a pink wormhole. And the only reason he's actually able to do those types of things is just because he's going with the flow. He's not questioning anything random and instead just kind of finds use out of everything random that happens. And that is how Wilford's philosophy caused him to accidentally conquer his world. But moving on in other news, whenever Wilford's not out drinking or partying, he's doing interviews. He has interviewed many famous pop culture icons. Some of these include Phone Guy from FNAF and Slenderman from Slenderman. He also once had a rap battle with Slenderman. I wonder if that's canon to the Markiplier lore. Well, to be honest, considering Wilford's character and considering the world that we already established he lives in, that rap battle could very well be canon to the Markiplier lore. And actually, if we think about this deep enough, since the rules that we established of this universe pretty much can be summarized up to there are no rules, that means that Markiplier can pretty much undo uh, any sort of retcon that he's ever done to this lore. Which bravo to him, because if there's anything that a writer or script maker or any sort of storyteller hates the most, it's having to do retcons. So for Markiplier's case, he made it to where pretty much anything that would be considered a retcon, it's really just something that helps establish the basis of the lore and the limits to how far we can stretch our theories. But anyways, moving the topic back to Wilford, we still have the question of what is next for this character? What does the future hold for Wilford Wharfstash? And to be honest, I feel like Wilford's future in the Markiplier lore is very bright. Because not only is he one out of the two most popular egos, only in some case scenarios falling second place to Darkiplier, but also he's probably the ego who has the most character development. I'm willing to bet that when it comes to this character, Markiplier is nowhere close to being done playing as him. Who knows, maybe he'll even make a little subtle cameo in Markiplier's own theatrical movie, which by the way, he's making a theatrical movie this year. But until we get any more information about that, I guess we just have to wait and hope that U2s can actually make a U2s figure or plushie or something about Wilford Wharfstash. Come on U2s, make it happen already. But that's going to be it for this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did enjoy and I will see y'all in the next video. Goodbye.